Okay, in this video I'd like to continue on with my tutorial series discussing complex analysis. Specifically, this is video number 9 and I'm going to discuss the Taylor and Lorentz series expansions. As usual, I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. Here I have all my videos archived and listed and I also have a few other bits and pieces which may be of interest to you. I'd like to recap on the videos previous to this which are relevant. Of course, we're discussing complex analysis and therefore my videos on complex numbers are relevant. In the section on complex analysis, I derived the Cauchy-Riemann equations, derived Green's theorem, derived the divergence theorem. I show the relationship between Green's theorem and the divergence theorem. In video six, I discussed the Cauchy integral theorem and later the differential arc length formula. Video number eight, I derived the Cauchy integral formula. This particular formula and this particular video are the most important parts of the prerequisites for the current video number nine. I'd like to do some revision or motivation. A geometric series is one where a constant ratio exists between all the terms. Consider for example one half plus one quarter plus one eighth plus one sixteenth and so on. It can be shown that this is in fact the series from n is equal to one to infinity of one half to the n. Now let's build upon this a small bit. Consider the expression one over one minus x. It can be shown that this has a power series representation and that the power series representation is the infinite sum from zero to infinity of x to the n with a radius of convergence of the magnitude of x less than one. If you're not convinced of this, you can look at the division on the rest of the screen. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go through that though. The point really is that the function one over one minus x can be represented by an infinite power series. Now, while this might be something which you're familiar with already, this is, uh, in my opinion, quite an important property, and it was quite a big deal when it was first discussed, discovered that this is possible. So we're gonna build upon this and discuss the Taylor and Lorentz series. So looking at the function one over one minus x, the condition that the magnitude of x must be less than one is important because otherwise we won't get convergence and in actual fact it will not have a power series representation. So it only really works for small values of x. Unfortunately, such conditions are quite limiting. So we seek a more general expression. We make some assumptions about our function. First of all, we assume that f of x has a power series representation around x is equal to a. We assume that it is infinitely differentiable and we assume that all of the derivatives exist. Basically, this boils down to us assuming that we're talking about an analytic or holomorphic function. Holomorphic is a more modern term for the word analytic. Basically, if your function satisfies these, it is analytic. A function which wouldn't be analytic is one which has a divide by zero scenario or an infinity. Those are not analytic functions. But there's a more elegant and useful method for doing this, involving the Cauchy integral formula, which I've written at the top of your screen. Note, by the way, we're integrating the function capital F of Z, which is not analytic, but we rewrite it as the ratio of the analytic function small f of z and z minus a, where a is the pole. The result is the value of small f evaluated at a multiplied by twice pi i. And we refer to this f of a as the residue, something I'll discuss in the next video. Now, whether I use the placeholder a or z0 for the pole is irrelevant, in this particular expression, I use a, but for the remainder of the video, I'm going to use z0. Here, I have rearranged the Cauchy integral formula 
to calc for the for the residue. So we have f of z zero. So one over twice pi i, the anti-clockwise closed counter integral of small f of z dz over z minus z zero. To be explicit, I've shown the fact that we're really integrating the function capital F of z, which is not analytic. Note, by the way, what you get out is a function of what's what what is of what is here. So z0 and z0. Now I'm going to introduce two dummy variables. Z is going to go to z prime, z0 is going to go to z. The graphical interpretation of which you'll see in a moment. Now it's for this reason that I've also placed these uh I have placed the small pink arrows. It's just to make you clear as to where the primes are and where they aren't. So the new variable of integration is dz prime. And we're going to integrate down from z prime to z. And that as a result is going to give us out f of z. Truth be told, we want f of z. We don't want f of z prime. But we're using this dummy variable f or excuse me z prime in order to get at f of z and later to actually get at the pole z0. Why do we do it? Z lies inside the circle C. C is a circle of radius R centered at the pole at z0. We let z prime be a variable at the surface of C. So previously we would have done something like we would have set up our circle C maybe like this red line and I might call it C prime and we would have applied the Cauchy integral formula along that. You'll see in a moment why we don't do it but rather we consider the circle C and use the variable z prime on that. It will allow us as we shrink shrink down towards z, towards z it will allow us to get actually at z0. Remember the Cauchy integral formula is only valid in the limit. Finally look at the denominator. The denominator is 1 over z prime minus z. This is important. We try to expand 1 over z prime minus z in powers of z minus z0 not z prime. We do this because z prime is outside of z. Therefore, if we look at z prime minus z0 divided by z prime, excuse me, z minus z0 divided by z minus z0, its magnitude will be less than 1 and such a power series will converge.